I'll ask you some questions. Like what? Well, how about this? Why have you dedicated your life to techno tutor? Why is it so important to you? I think because for myself, I saw for myself how much my life could have been so different if I had had a proper education and if my parents had a proper education and if the people around me had had a proper education and if my ability to communicate with everyone else around me, if our language was the same, how much that would change our experience of ourselves and of each other. So, I mean, that's the main point. That's the, that's the real foundational, fundamental point there, is that ability to communicate and live in a world where we're all working together because we can all talk to each other. Why do you want that kind of world? Why not just leave things as they are? Well, because then there's suffering, you know, whether on a small scale, uh, you know, just in a, a minor sense in terms of not being able to really fundamentally build relationships with other people for yourself. And I mean, there's suffering on a very large scale where, I mean, people are seriously suffering like not having food, not having a place to live, not having their basic needs met. And that really, same thing, comes to not really understanding each other, not understanding that the world would actually be better if everyone was equally supported. And I really see all of that is rooted in our education. And that if children are effectively educated from the very beginning, then they're gonna see this. They're gonna see it because it's obvious, it's common sense. But what about people who say, um, we just need to fix the education system? Well, the education system was designed to do what it's doing right now. I mean, right now, I mean, it links to our economic system too. You need people in certain positions. You know, not everybody in our current economic system can be a leader because you need someone to work in factories, you need someone to work in Walmart, you need someone to work in McDonald's. But what's really cool is with technology changing so much, we have this opportunity right now for people to be properly educated. And the thing is, what I see and from my experience, I don't see it happening through the education system as it currently is structured. There's too much built into the system to try to hold people down or to hold people in certain positions or to try to bring out the people who are going to be really good at following instructions and kind of put down the people who are not very good at that. And I think there's too much within that design for it to happen through that system. You'd have to tear it all down. Do you think that Well, going back to what you said earlier about, you know, you need someone to work in McDonald's. What do you mean by that? Well, the way that it's currently set up, right? I mean, you hear this when you listen to politicians talk in America about how we have to create jobs, right? But what is a job? It's literally something that somebody is giving you. They're giving you money and you exchange for work. It's not you creating anything. It's not building anything. It's a, it's a gift and for which you have to feel guilty for so you constantly experience that in your job. I mean, you talk to anybody who has a job, right? Like, talk to anybody. Go ask them how they feel about their job. A lot of people experience it, probably the majority of people experience it like this constant kind of point of stress, right? I mean, because it's not something you're building, it's not something you're creating. You know, it, it's almost like you have no direction, you're not directing your own life. You're just directing yourself from job to job. There's this point of security and survival built into that whole structure that makes it so that people are constantly living in a point of stress. So how do you think, um, how do you think people's lives would be different if they were educated in a way where they were able to create things, they were able to take responsibility for that? How would their lives be different? How would the world be different? Well, firstly, if, you, if you're becoming a creator, right, if you're becoming something where you're building something in the world, 
you're going to want to support other people. You're not going to want to force people to be in a sort of job structure where they're experiencing their life as stress. You're not going to want that for another person because you're not going to want it for yourself. So firstly, you're creating, you're experiencing that experience for yourself of being a creator, being in direction of your own life, you know, and within that, within that experience of that, you're going to want that for other people because, I mean, you'll understand that this world is not about pushing other people down. It's not about survival of the fittest, you know, that whole concept that, you know, we're kind of programmed with in our world. I heard something the other day, um, was it in that NLP book maybe where he says it should have been survivor survival of the fitters because just the people who fit into the mold yeah. that survive in this world not really the fittest people um, so yeah that's interesting so it's not you know so much of this world I mean here's the thing people think they have to become something they think that you have to get something or you're missing something and really education isn't about putting stuff into you so much as it is pulling out and drawing out what is so great within each person already so I mean realize the potential look at all these people around you know if every single one of these people could live their life to their total full potential I mean imagine what just even this experience of us sitting here would be like Imagine what our lives would be like if every single one of these people felt totally um, confident and in, were enjoying their lives and didn't just feel like they need to go home and drink beer and like sit in front of the television and kind of wipe out. Because that's what most people experience. Maybe you specifically don't experience that, but realize, look around you, most people do experience that. And it's not cool and nobody wants that for another person, you know? We and want that, to yeah. each feel that power within ourselves. And that escaping thing is really just because you're not doing anything in your life that really gives you happiness. Well, as it gives you, but you know, what I've found so far, and I know you've experienced this, is that the more we add value to other people's lives and our lives, like just naturally, the more happy we become. Yeah. We don't have to go get happiness. All the things we did when we were younger, trying to get happiness, always had a negative side effect, always had a consequence, and it always ended up you ended up with me wanting more and you know, basically just becoming addicted to something to under the idea that I'll feel good when I have it and never getting it. Well, the other thing is it was always about you were never really satisfied even in the moment that you were in. You're always moving from experience to experience and never really satisfied because again you're looking outside of yourself for happiness because that's what's required in this world to kind of not go crazy you know at the moment that's, that's what a product is, is all up. about right yeah and consumerism is here is something for you so yes. that you can get happiness from it yes. like this just like a job you talk about here is a yeah. job now you can extract some kind of money which you can then use to purchase things which will make yeah. you feel happy but true happiness comes from creating values for other people, for yourself, creating value in this world, real value. Value being defined simply as something that is best for everyone. Because if it's not best for everyone, it's gonna have a negative consequence, it's gonna come back into your life at some point. And there's also, when you do something that doesn't benefit everyone, there's always a subconscious point of guilt, whether you recognize it or not. And, you know, doesn't mean that you're gonna be perfect right now, we're not perfect, but you learn you know, you have this opportunity and this time on earth to learn from your actions and from other people's actions. You don't have to learn just from yours. You know, like the whole idea in spirituality that we're all just here to learn lessons. I agree with that to a certain point, as long as we actually learn the lessons and change, but also we don't have to learn everything ourselves. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be only a personal process because we're a collective. We're, we're individuals and in we're part of a collective. So, you know, you can learn from other people's processes. You can accelerate your own process. You don't have to make the mistakes that people have been making for years and hundreds and thousands of years. We can stop making those mistakes. I mean, education, we've been making a mistake with education for a long time now. And like Katie was saying, like you were saying, it's, um, it's doing what it's designed to do, right? which is a mistake. It's a mistake that everyone participating in the education system is perpetuating. And if it's got so much momentum now, 
that it's going to take us one plus one communicating with people yes. to support that to shift. It's not about, per se, right this moment, going to like your state government and trying to figure out, yeah. like, you know, like try to force that change. You can't. It's too it's much like, inertia. It's like a boulder running yeah. down the hill or rolling down the hill. Yeah. You're not going to be able to just stand. You just no. standing yeah, exactly. there trying to stop it from there's, rolling down. Yeah, there's too much money. There's too much. Um, power there's too much vested interest yeah. in, in how things are moving I like that analogy of the boulder because there's inertia there you're not gonna be able to stop it you're not gonna be able to go into the schools and change the schools those things will fall in line as um, see and it's yeah it's not defeatist we're not being defeatist right. like these things will change because it's inevitable yeah. it's inevitable because people are gonna start doing the proper education in the home yeah it's going to happen it's gonna take the early adopters exactly the ones who get it, the ones who really want to change despite all the frames of reference that reinforce the current status quo, you know, the people who really want to make a difference in their own lives, in their children's lives, in, in the world, you know, children today are bombarded by visual stimulation, by ads, by video games, by their peers, everything. It's, it's, it's more... <laughs> It's more than even when you and I were in school and, and, and little kids, you know? And I know like our parents' generation, for example, they tend to be a little bit more nostalgic and say like, well, things, you know, I turned out fine. And it's like, yeah, but the world has changed. You know, look at the rates of autism, you know, that are just skyrocketing, for example. But nothing has really changed, right? Because even at older generations, did they get to live to their full potential no. their whole life? I mean, when we think of full potential, our frame of reference right now is so... Um, it's beyond what most people would think, right? Right, well, our frame of reference is very closed, very small, oh, like, oh, yeah. I, think you know, hours. <laughs> I would enjoy myself if I could retire at 60 and if I could have right. enough benefits to be able to, like, kind of coast through life until I die. I mean, if that's the mentality, that is not enough. Like, there's so much more, right? Well, I think that's what's changing, is is people now, like our age and younger, see more potential in the world. You know, they don't necessarily believe that they can achieve it, but well, there's, it's, there's so much more, you know, especially because of technology, it seems like there's more that we can do, and there is more we can do. See, alongside that, though, <coughs> it's interesting, because alongside that, there's even more product and consumerism. To, as a point of distraction so right. there, there's a lot of potential there yeah there's a lot of potential. there's a lot of potential for change but there's also a lot of potential for abuse yeah and misuse of technology misuse of what we're capable of you know i i look at it like we can create anything we want really in this world there's so many things we create and there's a lot of things that we probably shouldn't create and that's yeah. what free choice and free will is really about it's about you have the freedom to choose and do pretty much whatever you want but it's only by making the choices that are best for you and others that your exercise of free choice brings you an actual freedom to live and express yourself and enjoy life. Otherwise, if you misuse your free choice, you will create so much consequence that it ends up totally restricting you. So it's not about being scared or setting up control systems and things like that and like creating a security police state or something like that. It's about everybody becoming 100% responsible within their own lives. And the only way you can do that is by accessing your creative ability. Because when you can access your own creative ability, you don't need someone to provide you a job, like you said. You can create on your own. And you wanna be around other creators. We love being around other people who wanna create more and do more and have more and contribute to the world. That's what I enjoy is being around those types of people. And the funny thing is, I look, I look around and everybody has that potential. It's not something you have to get, it's just something you have to recognize and it's more about unlearning everything that you've been taught about yourself and this world yeah. than it is learning anything. And There's a lot. It's a process too. It's a process, yeah, but we have tools. This is why we talk about Technotutor. This is why we talk about Jin, right? It's why we talk about Destiny. It's why we talk about Neo Theme. These are tools that are very advanced and that doesn't mean they're complicated but the point is whatever you're learning in school is <laughs> not going to get you anywhere right 
like I saw Bill Gates on his Facebook, he said, um, he said, I just got lucky, but for most people, they need to get college degrees to be successful. Like, what's the most money you can make with a college degree? I don't know, like C C couple, If that, right? Maybe if you're like a dental surgeon or something like that. You can make more money, but you probably end up doing something that has nothing to do with your degree. Right, you can still go to college and <clears throat> do anything you want, but the point is just going to college isn't gonna do anything, you know? And so, going to school, any of that, like. The, the purpose of college, right now the major purpose okay and everybody can experience different things when they're in college but the main purpose is to set you up for the job market that's what it's for yeah you know because you can learn skills outside of college but the reason you need that piece of paper is so that you can go to some big firm or something like that and get a job that's the purpose what if you don't have that piece of paper well you're not going to get that firm job well maybe you will actually now they're looking for Students who have not been in college deliberately because they because, found yeah because they a lot of firms are started by these creative people who don't want just people who are going to work with the status quo or work with just memorize instructions and carry them out they want creative, creative thinkers people. right and well you don't get that in college of course not I mean no, you we can, went to college like you can sit it's in a not... classroom full of people when when the teacher asks a question no one speaks. I mean, in a classroom full of like 500 people, yes. when that happens, no one or even a small, even smaller classrooms, even the smaller classes that we would be in, nobody would talk. Yeah. It's like they, it's like a glitch. You know, if you're asked something that's not just word for word from the book, you have difficulty, you can't process. You know what's going on. So these are all indicators that people need to be supported. You know. We have our work cut out for us. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun though. We love it. We need people like you who get it <laughs> to join us, <laughs> to wake up, yeah. to start making a difference in this world. So we can have, like we're sitting out here at the park just enjoying a nice lunch. We have the freedom to do that mm -hmm. because we're entrepreneurs, because we're self-created, because we create our own success. We have the ability to eat right so we feel good. We have the ability to have the time to do what we want. To um, We have the money that we need, you know? And the cool thing about being an entrepreneur, especially in sales, is there's no limit to how much money you can make. So as much money as you want to make, you can. And when you do something like what we do with TechnoTutor, you're making a positive difference in other people's lives and in the world as a whole. And so you're making a positive difference in your life. And so that means the more you make, the more money you make, the more you benefit the world. By default, it's a mathematical equation. So if you're looking for something where you can make a difference in your life and other people's lives, this is where it's at. And you'll feel good and it'll be genuine. Yes. You know? And you can work a couple hours a day and feel great afterwards and not want to escape. Just have time to sit with your husband or wife and enjoy a picnic instead of being like, I don't want to talk, I just want to go watch my TV show. You can still watch TV shows if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't because I just find them boring now, right? But some people don't. Some people enjoy it. I don't care, right? I like things that other people find are probably boring, <laughs> right? I'm sure not everybody wants to read books on NLP, right? So it's fine. But yeah, I mean, I'm just so excited because every day I see what we're accomplishing and the people that we're attracting to work with and the people that we're helping and the difference that it's making. And it's really exciting. So we'll see you next time.